In recent years, we've been graced with some really strong adaptations of seminal Western works in anime, like Romeo x Juliet and Gankatsuo, Count of Monte Cristo. Even back in the 80s, we had OVAs like Lensman, Captain Future, and Starship Troopers, which apparently made a bit of an impact. Of course, we also got some real stinkers in there, too, more recently, like that weird Dante's Inferno business and those Marvel anime. <laughs> oh, boy. But I think the point stands that it's not only possible, but also commercially viable. Now, the biggest issue lately is that a whole lot of animation studios are either completely creatively bankrupt or too wrapped up in doing another season of Onichan Fuck Me Tenderly or whatever, but it's not impossible. So with maybe a little further ado, here's 10 suggestions that I think would work out pretty dang well. Number 10, Clockwork Empire. Well, I'm sure there are a million and a half other steampunk novels and trilogy that are just as deserving of an anime adaptation. I think Clockwork Empire, with its elegantly simple characters and its particular type of drama, would fit well in the way anime generally paces itself. Clockwork Empire takes place in your typical alternate Victorian London with a bunch of robots, mad scientists, and comical but courtly romance and adventure. And it's got enough material to keep a series going without dropping into filler. A solid mark for an adaptation, plus it's got robots in it. Given how much people seem to enjoy steampunk these days, this is the kind of easily adaptable story that would fit perfectly into the anime style. Number 9. Alan Quatermain slash Indiana Jones Well, it could be argued, probably rightly, that these two are basically the same character. An anime with high adventure, with a grizzled protagonist, and a world that's just coming into modernity always seems to excite the imagination. Now, if they went the Quatermain route, they'd have to do a little bit of cleanup work, given anime's propensity to really fudge up anything to do with black people, but it's not impossible. And of course, Indiana Jones is a good, solid choice for adapting into a serialized TV show, because that's what it's based on. Young Indiana Jones worked to an extent, so why not an anime? And considering the last time Harrison Ford was depicted in 2D animation, it looked like this, uh. maybe we should give him something just a hair bit better. Number 8. Ghostbusters. For all the uproar and man-baby complaining that Ghostbusters caused, maybe it's time to take them into a new medium altogether. The series' concept itself is simple enough to take into any sort of serialized medium, as demonstrated by the comic book series that's coming out right now, and the cartoon from the late 80s, and transplanting the characters from medium to medium doesn't lead to too much decay. And because you don't have to worry about actors in a physical role, the potential for everything introduced across all of the different mediums, the new movie, the old TV show, extreme Ghostbusters even, could fit into it without very much fuss or muss. It seems like a no-brainer, but then, what do I know? Number 7. Eldritch Horror slash Call of Cthulhu In the interest of not hooking too hard into one story specifically, I think an anime based on HPL's work would be really great, full of all the spooky imagery and creeping dread that anime like Hellgirl and Kakurenbo have proven to effortlessly pull off. Investigators from all walks of life trying bravely and perhaps futilely to protect the world from all sorts of nasty beasts with a healthy dose of body horror that shows from the 90s used to throw in there would do great guns. Plus, anything with our generation's favorite tentacled unknowable horror always seems to enrapture the imagination. Though we should probably leave the killer penguins from Mountains of Madness at home. Number 6. Blue Beetle. If Marvel can port their properties over, why doesn't DC? I think Blue Beetle, the current one at least, named Jaime Reyes, would be a perfect starting point. Chosen by the alien power armor Kaji Da, he fights metahumans, aliens, and other nastiness, while juggling the slice-of-life stuff that always seems to crop up in shows these days. We've already technically seen a Blue Beetle show, and it was called Kamen Rider Kabuto, but that wouldn't be that much of a stretch to port into an animated format. Considering how popular Kamen Rider is, and how well-received Arrow and Flash have been, and how much people liked My Hero Academia, this would be a shoe-in, especially if you made it an animated adaptation that fit into the Arrowverse. Number 5. Monster Apocalypse. What do you get when you take Kaiju of All Stripes, Giant Robots, Sentai Heroes, Cthulhu, and H.G. Wells' Martian, and throw them in a miniature box? You get Monster Apocalypse, a board game about crushing buildings and splatting other monsters. This is practically begging to be turned into an anime, considering how much of it is basically in it already. The game was criminally underappreciated when Privateer Press put it out, and maybe getting something like this made would give it the send-off it deserves. There's so much material to pull from as a big, juicy franchise that would be child's play to whip up an adaptation script and get the ball rolling. 
Well, maybe somewhere down the road. Number four, the Princess series. Girl power and spades here. In Jim C. Hines' novel series, Cinderella, Snow White, and Sleeping Beauty all team up and battle mythical forces with their own brand of thematically appropriate weaponry. The characters here adapted from their original works, more than their cushy Disney counterparts, battle fantastical forces of all shapes and styles, from evil mermaids to Little Red Riding Hood gone bad. Of course, the only problem with this would be convincing whatever studio was doing the animation not to show off TNA every 10 seconds, as a fair few of them seem prone to do. That's decidedly against the point of the stories. Regardless, the series would be perfect for adaptation to any medium, but with its generally looser guidelines, anime is a good fit. With less restrictions, the darker elements could shine all the better and make the endeavor as full and flavorful as the original works. Number three, Old Man's War. There are three kinds of sci-fi in my estimation. There's soft sci-fi with lasers and crab people and Warp Factor 9 and all that. There's hard sci-fi with colonial marines and generation ships and its ilk. And then there's dumb sci-fi, where the writers know just enough to explain things, but they explain it poorly and usually get it wrong. Soko no strain, I'm looking at you. Anime is chock full of dumb sci-fi. So what does smart sci-fi look like? Well, in my estimation, a good example would be Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Scalzi knows how to toe a line between telling an interesting story on a broad scope of a universe and not getting bogged down with the nitty-gritty stuff that trips up a lot of modern sci-fi. He also has a damn good handle on what's been written before him, east and west alike. If Starship Troopers can get an adaptation, so can Old Man's War. And yes, Ghost Brigades was slated for a TV show by sci-fi, but really, animate it. Make it weirder. It'll be perfect. Number two, John Carter of Mars. This is a big tie between Conan the Barbarian, but if you haven't picked up on it yet, I think that it would be a pretty great fit for John Carter of Mars to meet up with a little Japanese animation. The version we got in America, the Disney version, was pretty close to the original, all things considered, but it was very much sterilized in parts. The other problem, of course, that it was a version that existed in a world where we'd seen all this before. John Carter of Mars is a great sword and sandal story, but it was also written in the 1910s. A hundred years later, we'd seen it in parts, but never in its totality. So if there was an anime adaptation that was decidedly not kid-friendly, like the comic book series currently running from Dynamite, we could get the full scope of it, with all the blood and boobies that it originally called for. And that goes double for Conan, but I like John Carter better. Sue me. Number one, Warhammer 40,000. Why has this not happened yet? We have anime like Berserk, Blame, MD Geist, and yet no one said, Hey, Games Workshop, we like your gory, filthy, heavy metal universe. Let's make a story in it. They haven't picked up on the running theme here. Between the necessity for dark storytelling and bloody, hyper-violent battles, Warhammer 40,000 would work great as an anime, if it was still 1993. But there's yet hope. Masami Obari and Koichi Ohara, neither of which are well-known for great stories, but striking and gory visuals, haven't retired yet, and they would be great choices to direct some kind of Warhammer 40,000 animated feature and really get to the heart of that grimdark to a comical degree universe. So there's ten Western works that I think would be perfect for an anime. I don't think any of them will ever happen unless the rights to Monster Apocalypse suddenly, I don't know, go on the market. But as a whole, it's kind of a shame realizing the huge disconnect between what I grew up with in anime as a medium and what I see coming out all the time now. And I realized that we're just getting it unfiltered and we're getting what is selling right now. But at the same time, I miss seeing copious amounts of blood and gore. I miss OVAs where violence and stupidity <laughs> overwhelms all. For as much as I have railed against it in the past, I kind of long for it these days, because the alternative is another show where the main character is oversleeping and his little sister, who he's going to fall in love with, comes and knocks on the door and says, Oh, chan you're going to be late for school! I digress. The point being, we need some kind of shake-up in the anime industry, and I think that adapting any of these works could take it from this very insular thing and bring it out to a wider audience. Considering the globalized nature of entertainment these days, the fact that anime has remained almost exclusively Japan only kind of floors me, and I think that needs to be fixed if they want this genre to continue. And so if they start picking and pulling from outside works, 
it will help bolster their longevity. But, you know, that's just my two cents.